Ah, oh, we're live. Let's see. We do. Do we have our intro ready? This is the spooky and ultimate show thing <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> That's all we got. So we are accepting, you know, anyone that wants to be a famous musician and start the intro. So that would be very, very cool. Yay! So, go clap, yeah. mild applause. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oh, hello. Hi, baby. Mwah. Okay, go away. Go away, go away, go away. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thursday night. How are you all, you, you spooky freaks, doing? Uh, let's start off immediately with a disclaimer because I know some of you are very, very special people out there, very delicate. This is not a kid friendly show, so right there, put your kids to bed. Uh, we are not paid by Spooky, we are not compensated by Spooky, we do not work for Spooky, therefore the opinions and information expressed here are not from official Spooky staff. We're just a bunch of, you know, longtime Spooky vet goers and, well, we know the real scoop. We say stuff they can't say. There we go. Sue them, sue us. No, don't so, uh, <laughs> don't sue anybody. Well, I mean, everybody gets so happy. It's like if you go on the Facebook page, it's, I'm going to get my lawyer because Hurricane Matthew. <laughs> yeah, sue Mother That's Nature. Right. Yeah, good luck with that. Not, not us. <laughs> not us. Okay, and, and, and tonight, obviously, we have Harriet with us. Hi, Hi. Harriet. Hi. <laughs> and then we, we, we got big, big Momo there. What, what is this? I was just saying hi to her. According to, uh, yeah, she's like right oh. here on my screen. So, oh, oh, I thought you were making like shadow puppets. <laughs> I thought it was going to be that kind of show. <laughs> okay, and just for the record, this is a no pants episode. Oh, 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 yeah, let's get the music out from all. Wow, chicka wow, wow. <laughs> That's right. Take it off, baby. Take it off. Uh, uh, I, I got them dollar dollar bills. Done. Make it rain. I've got some 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> well, me personally, I can't wear pants because I've got a leg tattoo that's healing and nothing can touch it. So I don't have any pants anyway. So there's nothing to take off. But yeah, just shirt. That's it. So, Mo, where do, where's the pants? Somewhere over there. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, fair they enough. Landed on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I came to this party without pants, so I mean. Oh, yes. you came to this party without pants. See, you know that should be like a rule. Just at spooky, you should come to any party without pants. Sans pants. Done, yes, uh, that's been pants. done, actually. Uh, Hashtag sans pants. <laughs> yeah. Sans I like pants. this. Sans pants. I like that. Hashtag. <laughs> okay. Um, most of you guys know about uh, spooky days at the parks. There's really not been a lot announced this week. Um, there are a couple other things that we are going to talk about. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, uh, those of you that want to know about the Hyatt, uh, this afternoon a bunch of us went in and we looked through past episodes and we got key points of everything at the Hyatt from what the parking is like, uh, what, you know, what food to have around there, review of the rooms, the walkthrough of the Hyatt, everything. Anything and everything you want to know about the Hyatt, tipping, the pool, you name it. We've all got it. Just check out our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash ultimate spooky guide. Check it out. Everything about the Hyatt is there. So it hopefully it should answer all your questions. And you can check out previous episodes and see how like googly and awkward we are. So uh, yeah, so there's that. Real okay. quick about that. I just tried to uh, uh, reserve my room for them. Okay. Thursday night is completely booked. So. Uh, wow. wow. Really? I could, I could only get Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Okay, let's just let's just hope that that is just because that they haven't opened up the room blocks yet. I'm yeah, yeah. cross your fingers, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean they've been they've been posting that uh, the the rooms are going. I mean they're going, and um, I, you know I figured that's just some something that everybody would say, but yeah, I went to try to book, and um, yeah, nothing. we got our Thursday night right. Yes. Okay. Good. We. Whew. Okay. That's crazy because it is mega early. It, yeah. They haven't even announced any guests yet. No. Wow, this is going to be huge. Okay. Apparently. 
Yeah, and even when we uh, got called and got our room, we were told that they only had uh, king size beds. They didn't have the double beds. All the double bed rooms gone. Well, so you get what? like one king size. Uh, on Thursday, I'm sleeping in between you guys. So make room. <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. You act like that's a problem. <laughs> give, give me some mo love. I, I need me some mo love. Uh oh. <laughs> I usually yeah, go, I usually talk. Get a bed of five anyway. So I mean. <laughs> Oh, oh, how how big is the fro going to be by Spooky? Oh, it's going to be huge. It's going to be yes. huge. Yes! It's going to be out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I've got, the okay. I've got a costume. I've got a costume in the, the works, mofro. and it's going to be this. It's going to be huge, yeah. So. Oh, that's beautiful. The mofro. We are really looking forward to the mofro. I'm getting you a blinged out pick just for that. I will make you a blinged out pick. I'm not kidding. I'm totally going to do it. Oh, man. <laughs> With Swarovski <can't> crystals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Speaking of uh, uh, the spooky, though, at, at the Hyatt, one of the vendors that is going to be there is uh, 13X Studios. And some of you guys may remember uh, 13X Studios. They, we talked about them a couple of times ago. They do the custom hockey masks. Uh, they've actually been pretty busy. I mean, between mentioned on Kevin Smith's podcast right after that Kevin Smith bought up the rights to his Silent Bob custom uh, hockey masks and now they're only sold at Jay and Bob's Silent Stash up in New Jersey so it's like good on him he went to Megacon apparently at Megacon they had a big, big piece done on him in the Orlando Sentinel so yeah good job. And, good job. seriously and then and now that I've actually figured out how this works let's try this hopefully Right. I horror. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Demi with technology. I push a button. Wee. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's that's Rick right there with 13X Studios. And apparently I horror, which is like, you know, the ESPN of horror sites, they actually reached out to him and did like a huge piece on him. And they did a big interview with them. Uh, just look up iHorror.com slash 13 Studios. Well, you, you can see the, the URL there. But he did a hell of a job, man. I mean, considering that he's only done two conventions, he's done really wow. well for himself. Yeah, and I has how long has he been doing mass? I mean, he's got a lot there, but I, I, I he's pretty new to me. Yeah, he he it, well, he's been at Spooky. He's a Spooky vet. He's been at Spooky for a while, but he hasn't. Um, I think this is the first time he's done something like this. Okay. So, oops, wait, there we go. Okay. But yeah, so I don't know exactly how long he's been doing it. I'm sure it's probably in the interview, but uh, wanted to bring it up. I mean, Rick, go you, man. Yay. Follow your dreams. <laughs> nice. Local yeah, boy does good. You know, I mean, because there is a, a mask of his I'm thinking of getting. Um, I want glitter on it, though. Um, I'm thinking <laughs> of the, uh, the David Bowie, the Aladdin Sane. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe something like that. I haven't decided. He even got Alice Cooper to sign one because he did one, you know, Man Behind the Mask. So he right. actually got Alice Cooper one, and Alice Cooper signed it and posed with it. And I'm like, that's really awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, he, so he'll take commissions and stuff like that if you ask him, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure he'll, he'll take commissions because, like I said, I'm, I plan on commissioning him for that David Bowie one. That's for damn sure. Yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be a PD one, like, very, very soon. We all know. With the Yankees cap. With the Yankees cap. He's got to I was going to say, he's got to glue the hair, though. He's got to glue the beard on him. We're going to do it right. That is going to be awesome. Oh, that's I like that. I like that. All right. Uh, speaking of vendors, let's see. You know, we don't really get to talk a lot about the vendors, and that's something I want to do this summer that we really haven't had a chance to get up close with, like, who is actually at Spooky, because Spooky doesn't really give a list of who's going to be there, and we'd like you guys to be a little bit familiar with all the local artists, because Spooky has been fantastic for the local artist community, and actually, Harriet actually has uh, an artist that she wants to talk about. Um, one of the artists that was at Spooky last December, I believe it was, was Vaughn Belak, B-E-L-A-K. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But he, yeah, he had a 
uh, uh, he invented it at uh, Spooky, and I've I've always wanted to get something from him because I do like his style. His 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 artwork is very uh, pop culture, gothic, uh, horror movie centric. Um, but I just hadn't got, seen anything that I just had to have until until. I walked, until I walked by his table and I saw this behind him. This is what I bought from Vaughn. It's ah! huge. It's an original. Nosferatu. And it was, yeah, it's Nosferatu uh, reaching down. Oh, and that's beautiful. He had it, he, Vaughn had it behind him. And I saw that and I said, I want that. And uh, he only had the one. He didn't have any prints. And I said, I don't care. I want that. And, uh, so, and I think I bought a couple other prints from him, too. But uh, he, he's, he was at MegaCon. He's been very active recently trying to get his artwork out there. Yeah. So um, he is one of the original artists that, come, that have come to Spooky and that we fully support. He's been at Gods and Monsters before. So look him up. Um, we'll put the link on here, I'm sure, after we're done with his Somewhere, stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, go check him out. So yeah, definitely Nosferatu. It's hanging in my bedroom, and I took it down so we could see it and show it for the... I for love the, the way this is done. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I saw it immediately, and I said I had to have it, and I bought it. It's mine. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I've only got a print, unfortunately. I haven't had the, the money to actually get one of his paintings yet, which I, it's on the list. Yeah. But I do have uh, his Vampira, because I'm a huge Vampira fan. So I did get the print of Vampira, which is actually in my bedroom. So I've got yeah. some of his stuff in my bedroom as well. Yeah, and he had a whole bunch. He had a book of, like, the smaller prints. He had a Nosferatu face. He had the nun from Conjuring 2. Um, I, I saw him do a commission, I think, of kind of a zombie uh, Nikolai Tesla. And I want that. So the next time I see him, I'm going to have to buy a Tesla print from Ooh. him because I was like, I have to have that as well. So I like that idea. Yeah, and it's on his. It's I've I've seen a, a, a picture of it on his on his uh, Facebook page. But yeah, yeah. Nikolai Tesla. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, a zombified it's, Tesla. Yeah, it's very cool. And I was like, when I saw that, I was like, I have to have that. So, but um, yeah, Von Belak, B E L A K. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Vaughn, definitely. Uh, Mo, what about you? I know there's like got to be a vendor or two of yours that you're like a huge fan of. Oh, don't even give me that face. Yeah. No, no. Well, you know where I hang out most of the time, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> but you don't act like you haven't been in the vendor room. Um, there's one particular one that I've seen uh, at the last one. Um, good friend of mine, um, Jenna, she, uh, she puts up uh, Dreams of Relia. Oh Rel yeah, Jana. Yeah, she, she does the the, uh, the octopus pendants. Um, oh yes, yeah. I, she she does a really really good job at those. Um, I really like hers. Um, She's a little like, like buddy. Her and her tentacles. I'm like, I'm like, there's got to be some weird hentai stuff around her house where she's gotten <laughs> so good at how to do the tentacles. You know, <laughs> Jana, we know about you. I know, right? <laughs> Um, uh, I've had a few friends that bought some stuff from her and they look really, really good. So yeah. it was actually something I, I considered getting for you, but I got you the big rock instead. But, um, I love that rock. It's like, it's just, I have um, a captured soul by my bed. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, a, a couple of the artists that I like, Morgan. Um, uh, God, I forget her last Mor name. Wilson, uh, Morgan Wilson. Yeah, that's it. Um, she does a really good job. Banky. She's always over by the uh, the, uh, the the horrors uh, coffee shop of horrors. She uh, did a couple of the covers for that. Um, oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, um, those are just a, just some of the favorites that I have. You know, some good friends that really make really good quality products. So, well, the other one that I what wanted to bring up, yeah, the well, the other one I wanted to bring up was uh, a new one. Actually, let me now that I got all fancy with the technology, let me do the screen share. <laughs> yeah, push the button. I'm pushing <laughs> buttons. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> now watch me screw it all up. Right? <laughs> like play it up, and then nothing happens. <laughs> I know. Okay, oh. that's showing up, right? 
Okay. Now, here's the thing that we talk about hygiene at Spooky all the time. Yeah. And one of the great things, especially if you have anxiety or claustrophobia, like a lot of us do, and the Hyatt is very, very overwhelming, you uh, bath bombs. Bath bombs are all the way down. I'm not talking about lush nonsense. Now, d uh, she goes by Ditsy Fitz. You can see it on the screen there. But uh, Etsy, Ditsy Fitz, is going to be her first time bending at Spooky. Um, I've tried her bath bombs, and they are absolutely amazing. Now, I know these are all cutesy, but these are the ones that she sells at, like, farmer's markets and stuff like that. But they have all sorts of different different uh, flavors and different scents. I mean, you look, you got a little Pikachu there. But, you know, little Mickey Mouse. But uh, she's planning on doing a whole bunch of really wild horror themed ones. So, you know, you know, black bath bombs and, and blood and, you know, aliens. And, you know, she's got a whole bunch. Um, but, yeah, if you want to try out her stuff, uh, it's Etsy.com shop Ditsy Fizz. And she's a local vendor, and, uh, you know, we're all about giving, like, the new vendors a shot. And I've never seen anything like this sold at Spooky before. No, so, no, and I hope... there's. I see a bat one at the top left in the background. Yeah. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, and there'll be a lot more of the, like those. I mean, she, she told me that she actually planned on doing, like, a bunch of horror-themed ones. This is just for the general, you know, masses right now, you know, Sailor Moon, blah, 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 stuff like that. But that she's... Iron Fist. Is that Iron Fist? Yeah, that one up top. That looks like Iron Fist to me. That, oh, oh, it could God. be Batman. Oh, shoot. It could be Batman. But regardless, so it's 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 Bat. So, But, I mean, she's going to have a whole bunch of different ones, you know, I mean, like Jason and Freddy. And there's, like, all these great different molds and stuff like that with, like, and different flavors. And some of them will have glitter in them. But this will also help the hygiene issue that we have at the Hyatt. So you people, like, get one of these. And look, they're not expensive. You get a couple no, of these. Three, three, yeah, you take bucks, yeah. Yeah, you get a couple of these, you use one every night, and you don't smell the whole weekend. You don't have to worry about stinking so much if you're soaking in this, it's, you know? So just just something to think about. But uh, check out her shop, and if you want to try her stuff, you know, before October, then there you go. And they're good for gifts, too. They are. We, we take bribes. We totally take bribes. We are shameless whores. <laughs> At least I am. I, I can be bought easily enough. <laughs> uh, that big guy over there, I know he can too. Him, <laughs> him right there. Let me tell you, picklebacks. Uh -oh. That man right there. I've done uh -oh. more for less, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm happy to say that probably we all have. So don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is very, very true. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, ah, the big news. Here we go. Wizard World. <laughs> no. I would like to thank uh, Morbid Movies, by the way. Um, Morbid Movies, who does this great series of grindhouse films uh, that they, you know, what was it? I think it's like once a month. Then in West Palm Beach, they get, you know, for like the Evil Dead or for Jaws or The Shining, all these classic movies. They get everyone together. Everybody watches a great old classic movie. Um, Morbidmovies.com. Check them out. Thanks, Mike. Um, yes. <laughs> but Mike uh, brought this to my attention. And huh, since I'm all screen share happy, <laughs> there is some... <laughs> You there is a lot tonight. <laughs> well, I mean, since there's not a lot going on with Spooky, I think it's important that we talk about stuff that's going on actually in the the horror con world. You know, yeah. so yeah, uh, absolutely. All right. Turns out Wizard World, now if you know anything about cons, Wizard World is one of the big conglomerate giants. They are starting a horror con. So the big Yep. The big corporate uh, giants are moving their way into our world. Uh, this one here, and this was just announced, uh, you know, May 10th, so this is still brand new. Uh, Wizard World Horror Fest. Now, granted, this is only in Philadelphia. Uh, held in conjunction with Wizard World Comic Cons and select cities being in Philadelphia, June 1st to 4th at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. It'd be very interesting to see what happens with this first one. But uh, right now, let's see, who do they have for guests? Yeah, I'm really not liking just, oh, God, no. Do they actually have guests, or are they just yes. having screenings with the stars? 
What it says here, let's see, the lineup for the first stop, Philadelphia, will include anniversary screenings of Buffy the Vampire Slayer with special guest Christy Swanson, the Monster Squad with Andre Gower and Ryan Lambert, who were just at Retro, by the way, and perhaps the most insane screening of A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, and I'm assuming... Oh, they actually... Do they have... Yeah. I'm not seeing Robert England on here. No. Let's see. Uh, the festival I'm, will host the ultimate... Yeah, Heather Langenkamp with a special acoustic show from yep. Don Dockin. Uh Tickets are twenty dollars. Well, that's why it's twenty dollars because they don't they don't have Robert England. <laughs> and I mean, are they are the people going to be are the celebs going to be there to do uh, meet and greets? Are they going to be doing pictures or autographs, or are they just going to show up and and present the film and do a Q and A? That's a good question. Uh, stay tuned for more screenings, events, special guests, and panels, which will be announced in the coming days. So I'm assuming that they're just getting us, this together last minute to, to figure it out. But yeah, yeah. The, the convention schedule is wizardworld.com slash Comic-Con. Uh, let's see. Oh, whoa. All access badges are on sale for now just 50 bucks. Jesus Christ. Are those separate, separate ticketed events? That's a good question. Uh, I, I I think 50, 50 is all access. So 50 is for every single one of them. I think singularly they might be 20. I'm not really sure how this is. Because I know Wizard World likes to ticket and dime for everything. Well, maybe that would be their downfall in the, in the future. Because right now it just looks like they're having screenings. Mm. You know, I don't know. It's, if this is like a new thing for them... It's really hard. I don't know. It. For a lot of the larger ones, what they've been doing is charging separate ticket events uh, for these panels that are an addition to access to the dealer room, which I find to be very, very annoying. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Agreed. Yeah, I just, I, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, my, my big issue with this is that uh, if you've seen a lot of these bigger cons, I mean, Megacon is a perfect example. And if you've been to Megacon in the past couple of years, everything is very clean and plastic and corporate. And, and you know, you have the, the different levels of ticket prices. Walker Stalker, if you've been to a Walker Stalker, you know, you have, you're in a line for this, you're in a line for that, and then you pay for this, and then you pay for that. It's not just pay one price and you get all this great stuff all weekend. Then occasionally you might have an extra charge for uh, a demo or something like that. That's what most of the smaller cons are like, and that's what I love about them. Whereas these, it pretty much is just cash in hand, bam, there you go. I mean, we all we all talk about it, we all joke about it. Norman Reedus, I mean, you wait four hours in line at these big conventions, pay a hundred bucks, and it's like, click, next. Right, right. That's that's a that's a that's a that's a transaction. That's not an experience. That's not a story. And that's what these these big cons are after, is just getting more money and more money and more money. And we've seen MegaCon and a perfect example. Uh, my daughter was at MegaCon this past weekend. Uh, John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard was there. Now I've got a, got a bit of a history with John Schneider. I've met him at a couple of different shows and stuff like that. And I told her, I said, you know what? He's a super nice guy. Just go up, show him the pictures of me and him, and and mention Spooky because he actually does have a, a bit of a horror repertoire. There's a couple indie mo indie movies that he did, and he's a fantastic guest. So I just told her to go up and say hi. Apparently, they wouldn't even let you near the table unless you were buying an autograph. You couldn't even say hi. Yep. What? Yeah, that's so been a trend lately. You can't even say hi to anyone without like purchase. What? What the hell? That I know, it's I, I've I've never seen that. I've never experienced that. And if they if they're gonna start nickel and diming every everybody by making us pay separately for a panel, or Spooky does. You know, I mean, uh, MegaCon. That's what MegaCon does now. I can't believe that. I mean, and, and just even to go up to somebody and say hello. I mean, when we just had retro, you can go up and talk to any of the guests. They were all in the same room. You can go up and talk to Joan Cusack. You didn't have to buy anything. Mm -hmm. You can just go up and say hello. You loved your movies and, and happy to see you. Thanks for coming and be about your merry way. What is that? that? I, I don't know. I mean, I think that like these, these, these corporates at like Fan Expo and Wizard World, they see what a cash cow that like, you know, uh, Walker Stalker has. I mean, Walker Stalker makes a fortune. 
you yeah. know? I mean, they go from city to city to city. And like I said, you know, and I know people, I mean, John, who's been on this show, has been a Walker Stalker, and they he's told us they have levels of tickets you buy the regular ticket and it's not just regular vip there's like silver, silver level and then there's platinum level and then there's something level and then there's the level where you get all the swag and then there's the level where you get like certain panels that other people don't get and it, and it, it's it's it saddens, yeah it saddens me that people think that this is the norm and this is what and i'm i'm really hoping that this fails because that's not what this experience is about. This is supposed to be a fan experience. That's what all these conventions are supposed to be for, a fan experience, not just to buy stuff and to stamp their name on something. It's supposed to be a fan experience, you know? I yeah, mean, you can, tell, you can tell a whole episode on the demise of the convention scene, you know, over the last five years. You really can. Um, there's a lot of things that's wrong with it um you don't have let's to talk about this well, let's talk about the horror cons no 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 go no, ahead I mean, I mean just just the new, newer cons in general i mean they're run by they're run by these corporations that are more um they're they're more into uh trade shows than anything else and then they come and they see that there's a profit to be made on these these you know these smaller fan run cons so what they're doing is buying all of the smaller ones up and they're and they're 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 doing this they're doing this and um it's 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 the downfall of conventions you know over the past decade you know this is just something that we're noticing slowly and slowly you have a lot of which is why i appreciate going to spooky so much is because it's PD will never sell out. Family. It's and owned that's... by a family, and he, he, you know, he loves what he's doing. Yeah. You know, um, you talk to some of the managers and at some of these other, you know, fan run conventions, and you know, they're not, they're just not the same. They yeah. don't care. They care about the money. They care about running a show. They don't care about who's going to be there. Everybody's a dollar sign, and. Well, anyway, that's my two cents on the whole thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on for about another 20 minutes on how, how you know, the decline of fandom, is pre <laughs> of yeah. fan, the fan run conventions has been uh, kind of slowly declining over the past 10 years. But uh, Well, the people who, the, the managers who are working Megacon, are they, are, they're getting paid from the people who own it. Is this correct? Well, so, it's, I believe so. it's owned. It's owned by a larger company called Inform, okay. which it and uh, fan run conventions are a very, very small part of a two billion dollar or organization. They run trade shows all the way across the world in Dubai. Um, they have a ton of shows over in Europe. Yep. Just the, the they're two the two small you know uh, corporations that they have, which is. Um, uh, one in uh, Texas, I think it's called De uh, and one in uh, uh, based out of uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking out here, Canada because they're Fan, ex Canada Fan Expo, yeah, Fan Expo. I know Fan you're Expo. It's a very, very small piece of the of a very large cog. Um, it's a huge comp corporation that basically that most of their money is made out of trade shows, and um, they're running it like a trade show. I could be shooting myself yeah. in the foot, but I'll but I don't really work for them anymore. So, <laughs> so I can probably say, and that, that what they're doing is buying it. They want, they want to kind of take over the market. They want to be that read pop. They want to be uh wonder. Read pop is another one. Yeah. Be, read pop, you know, they own uh, New York city comic con and, you know, a couple others. Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> these bigger companies are kind of running it like trade shows and it kind of, it's kind of missing the spirit of what fandom is all about um which is why i'm really i really do i really do enjoy spooky i really do enjoy yeah, some, there's a lot of big cons that um that that are kind of fan run as well like the old owners i love them to death of megacon mm -hmm. uh, agreed I, they, they really cared about if everybody was having a good time or not they did get really big at the end but Every year they improve on what they're, you know, on what was wrong with the last year. 
And you remember the last uh, that one day that they were across the street and there were so, so many problems. Well, the only reason that we were there was because of availability. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some big plastic show that was going on for like a month and a half and they couldn't get it for the time that they needed it. So it was like the only thing that was available or there wouldn't have been a MegaCon that year. Yeah. So they were kind yeah. of stuck, you know, into doing that. And, you know, you've got these big companies like Informa, which, you know, rumor has it, they want to buy up another big convention that I love. And <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. But... <laughs> I already, I, I already know where you're going. And I saw um, that coming a mile away. Yeah. It's, no, 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 a lot of the people that work for them, a lot of them are really, really great people. And uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing note. to do with that. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, the, just the way that, uh, conventions are going over the past, you know, five years or so. I mean, I'm I'm a newbie. The I'm modern Comic Con is dead. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And the it's modern sad. Comic Con is dead. Yeah, it's it's sad to say, but yeah, it's true. What? The modern the modern Comic Con. You know, everything from it's all gone corporate from C two E two to New York Comic Con to San Diego to all of them. They've all they have all got they've all sponsored by corporations now. That's my point. Okay. He's like, Comic Cons are dead? Yes. <laughs> Comic conventions, yes. I mean, the ones that they, was at All Con or whatever it was out in Dallas, that's all Fan Expo now. Every single one of them has been bought up by somebody, you know, and if they haven't, they're going to be. I mean, the horror cons are entirely something different, though. And that's what they're, since they've bought up all the Comic Cons, that's what they're going for next. You know, well, it's uh, slowly, it's slowly, I mean, you just in your last, uh, last piece you did there. They're slowly grabbing it up. You've got, you know, that larger one that you were just talking about, uh, the one in Atlanta, Walker Stalker. Walker and, uh, Stalker, yep. Yeah, that, that, I mean, they're mm -hmm. slowly just kind of eating into every piece of fandom. You've got, and it, it kind of all started way back when, um, uh, what's this, the Trek Vegas celebrate? Oh God, I forget the name of it. Creation, Creation Entertainment. Yes. Creation they started all of them. Slew of them all over the country, and they do the same. Vampire thing. Diaries and True Blood, and yep, I remember all that. Yeah, yeah. those are the the a la carte ones. What Harriet? Those I'm are the sorry. a la carte. Those are the a la carte ones where everything is a la carte. Yes, everything. Yes, you buy a ticket, a ticket for everything else. Like I'm a huge, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Huge. And the the one in Vegas, uh, there's just no way I could ever afford to go. Tickets for that for their for their premium package is about between seven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, and that's you know you know at least you get shit with it. But yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, yeah. you know, look, we just had Star Wars Celebration here. I mean, and it was packed, but you know, that's kind of like you know we get. It's not like an Repop, every year yeah. thing. It, it yeah it kind of travels and the people who go to that travel with it. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it unless you're unless you're a con pro um you really not may not have a great time at it because a lot of the newbies were posting on there Mo was she freezing up she froze up on me, yeah. Oh. You there, Harriet? Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Oh. You lost you, Harriet. Dead air, dead air, talk about something. <laughs> no, just the face that she's frozen on, it's just awesome. I love that. That's like yeah, a perfect movie weird. poster right there. I'm just going to leave that because I love that face. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to hate me for this. She's going to yell at me. But uh, but no, she's absolutely right. And You know, what she was saying, it like these newer people, they think – that this is the norm, that the how Star Wars Celebration was, that that's how it is at all these conventions. And that's how Walker Stalker and, and Reed Pop and all these, you know, creation, that's how all these companies do this. And they're playing that on that naivete and getting these newer customers to come in for these, these cons up. Oh, and she dropped. Okay. Yeah. But um, sh she'll come back in. But yeah, then... Um, but that's one of the things, and you were saying before, that's one of the reasons that we love Spooky, and that's why Spooky has our loyalty, and that's why we do shows like this, because PD will never sell. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these smaller uh, convention promoters, they'll do these shows specifically to build them up so they're such a big commodity where they can sell it to Reed Pop, where they can sell it to Creation, you know, and they can just retire, and it's like, oh, look at all this money I made. That's not PD. You know, and like you said, it's literally his family. 
I mean, Adriana, who's like 10, 11, she, she's going to take over one day. You know, there she is. Oh, and there we go. Speaking of, <laughs> I'm back. You know, it's it's funny that you have the Donald Sutherland because that's the face that you were making. You it froze on like the Donald on your you looking like Donald Sutherland. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was great. I was I was hacking away and then all of a sudden my screen went blank and it says you have lost connection and I was like, damn it! Yeah. No, it, uh, thanks Obama. No wait, that's not even a thing anymore, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't and we can't even say thanks Trump because that guy can't even friggin' spell. But anyway. Kobe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call Fifi. <laughs> I, know I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, well it had to. But Harry, <laughs> you, you were saying about Star Wars celebration. Yeah, because I mean I just felt bad again for the newbies who had never been, blah blah blah, because they kind of got trampled. Um, it, and and it, it can be overwhelming if you're not uh, a pro at it or if you've been at least once or twice. Um, and, you know, it just it kind of dampens people's spirits on wanting to go to something ever again. Yeah. No, and that's that's very true. And that's like like like, uh, like I was saying, it's like, you know, some of these convention promoters, they make these cons just so these bigger, you know, like Star Wars Celebration, Read Pop, whoever can buy up these cons. And now they're starting to see that these horror cons are starting to make money. So now they're like, ah, more change in the pocket. And right. PD will never sell. I, I can honestly say with complete conviction, never sell. You know, his show... It, I'm sure he's been made offers, you know, he refuses. I mean, for example, we all know that even though he does the professional celebrity uh, photos, he's stood his ground for the fans multiple times. And he's like, okay, you'll get maybe one or two people that'll do, that'll only do like the professional photo ops per show, but the rest of them are at the table where you can have an experience. And that's yeah. the reason why you love things like Spooky, because you don't get seven levels of VIP. You don't get 10 other panels that you have to pay an extra $15 for or whatever. That doesn't exactly. happen. And it's not going to happen. And so yeah. Wizard World, you know, <sighs> Orlando's oversaturated. Central Florida is oversaturated with conventions to begin with. And, and PD has come out as champion when it came to horror cons to begin with any other you know horror con that's come in pd basically just went like full-on pit bull and just ah! at every single one of them yeah well i mean he's been doing it for a while i mean spooky's been out there since years, what 2003 yeah. or something yeah i think it's 2003 yeah because i started going in 05 but uh yeah. you know and it was still in its infancy and as it's grown it's just you know we've gotten more coverage more media um we're talked about on the news on the radio, yep. etc., and you have when and we have a spooky family. We are we are loyal, and we yeah. will continue to be loyal. There's a reason though, because they've created that atmosphere where we want to be loyal. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just Wizard World, bring it, you know, with their little <laughs> horror fest and you know, whatever. Because Spooky's got that loyal, and like I said, that's how you get a con going and keep it going. You don't just bring in some big corporate. You know, with with Don Dawkin playing a show, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, Christy, out. Sorry, the one time I did meet Christy Swanson, which actually was at MegaCon, she was a bitch anyway. So. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I was with a friend of mine, and he had uh, like her Playboy issue, I think it was, or something like that. And so she was talking on her phone or whatever, and he walks up, and we were patiently waiting for her to get done with her phone call. We were just like, okay, fine, we're you know we're sitting there. And so she just has it, and then she goes like this, and then she takes it, signs it, hands it back. Doesn't even look up from the phone. Oh, my God. Christy, right there. Wow. <laughs> we give you the Redis. Yeah, the Redis. And that's not even a nice Redis. No. <laughs> that's not even a nice Redis. That's just a fuck off. <laughs> that's just a fuck off. So, Christy Swanson, you can suck my dick. There you go. <laughs> I knew That's it. the only experience I've had of her. <laughs> that face that right there. I knew it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. The, the last thing that we did want to talk about, uh, let's see. Speaking of spooky and why we love spooky so much, there are certain things that we do love about spooky because it's not just Q&As and celebrities and a vendor room. Uh, you know, in a lot of conventions, that's pretty much it. it. You know, it's pretty much a trade show. 
that's not what this is. They have like the Rocky Horror Shadow Cast. They have all these different things they bring in every year that you know keep things fresh. So you know what? I want to go to Mo first and like. So what if you had your pick of like different events or whatever that you'd want to see at Spooky in October? What are a couple of things you'd want to see? Karaoke. Ah yes. Burlesque. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see some boobs. That's all that is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's true. Uh, I, I really, I really do enjoy having some, having a burlesque at a. I, I, there were, there was uh, a few at a few uh, um, Star Trek conventions over the past few years, and I, I had a great time. I had a blast. Yeah. Um, I think they're great. I love the horror themed uh, ones. Yeah, I mean, you can theme it to whatever, basically whatever you want. Yeah. So yeah, I do enjoy that. Um, we've already got you know quite a few things that I enjoy about it. You know how much I loved uh, Spooky this past year and uh, how much fun I had. Shit, I was up till about five a.m. every night just talking to people. Yeah. You know the whole family thing. But as far as events go, I, I really do enjoy those things. I, I do I do like that we can get together, maybe do some kind of like uh, themed karaoke or something like that. Uh, there's yes. a couple things, a couple suggestions that came list. up that I wasn't a fan of, but yeah, those two are definitely on the top of my list. Okay, well, Harriet, what about you then? Um, I like the karaoke idea um, of bringing that back. Um, and, and it's not necessarily VIP because I remember the time that we had uh, the guy from Anthrax, forgot his name. Uh, um, Joey, Joey Belladonna. Thank you. And he got up there and sang a Journey song, and Lance Gasquet got up there and sang Johnny Cash. I mean, we, you know, those. Joey are Fatone. Uh, you know what? I have to. I have to bring up the video. I have Joey Fatone uh, karaoke Bon Jovi. It was amazing. See? And you know, the, those. Things, it's not just the fans that get up there and sing. It's also the celebrities that would come by and and karaoke as well. Um, so I second that definitely. Um, I really enjoyed the Muckle Bones, the museum. The, um, and it's funny because when you yes. mentioned that, I, I kind of flashed back to uh, the very, one of, the, I guess it was the first convention I went to. I went to an X-Files convention way oh. back when, when it, the yeah. show was still on. And the cigarette smoking man was there. You're dating yourself. And yeah, and Skinner was there. And they had props from the actual TV show. <laughs> And, oh, that's yeah, cool. and I mean they were like alien props because it was you know when it started it was all about aliens, but they had alien stuff, they had spaceship stuff that they had used in the actual uh, shows, and I said that's really cool, and I thought you know, and we've had stuff, we've had like the Jaws, we had the Jaws exhibit, um, that, that was, was cool. very cool, and I you know, and I would like stuff like that, and I would also you know we still can we still request. Uh, like behind the scenes people, like directors, musicians, uh, people who have done like the soundtrack and stuff like that. Because oh, yeah. They do, yeah, they do come to cons. They do attend. And yeah. you know, I mean, how we had John Landis, John freaking Landis, one year, and that was his, great. his table. You know, he wasn't busy, like slam busy all weekend. He was super nice. He was, you know, giving out autographs or like you know doing autographs and shaking people's hands and talking. And his Q and A was priceless. So I would like to see more prop exhibits mm -hmm. and, you know, more behind the scenes people, um, makeup people, directors, et cetera. Oh, yeah. So, okay. That's really sense. cool. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, who, who is it that uh, horror hosts, you know, speaking of behind the scenes people and everything, I would love to see more horror hosts. And I know that's a scene that's kind of dying, but I mean, you know, Miss Monster, I've been asking for Miss Monster ever since she was there the first time. I mean, and just even, and even though horror hosts seem more to be a Northern thing now with like Sven Gulli and Son of Sven Gulli and uh, I mean, we lost Zachary, unfortunately, but I mean, there's, there's a bunch of them, you know, like all over. And I think that's an art that needs to come back. And I would love oh, to, man. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Gooligans, I'd love to see them to come back. You know, I would love to see, you know, horror hosts, you know, not just, you know, oh, again, Johnny Depp, did, 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 Tim Burton, me, me, me. Oh, yeah. whatever, <laughs> fine. Well, no, if people want these big, big, then they complain about the crowds and they complain about the high prices, but you want Johnny Depp there. Yeah, if you want an A-list star, you're going to pay an A-list price. You're going to pay an A-list price and you're going to get an A-list crowd and you're going to pass out because you're not going to remember to hydrate. 
Right. So, but yeah, I would love to see more horror hosts, and I'd love to see horror hosts like announce some of these shows, like a horror host, uh, you know, like say Elvira or whoever, you know, announcing the burlesque show or announcing some of the movie screenings or stuff like that. That would be freaking awesome. Or like a, a, a riff tracks, you know, like uh, one of the horror hosts doing a riff tracks of like one of the old '50s movies. That would be freaking awesome. I would love to see stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm thirty. And on Thursdays, we there used to be we used to bring they used to bring in the vaude villains. That was like a spooky tradition. Uh, it was either like Thursday or Friday night, mm -hmm. and yeah, I really do miss that. And, and because it wasn't it wasn't um, you know like they stripped or got naked or anything like that. It, but it was it was a fun spooky. show. Yeah, it was a fun show. It was spooky or horror related burlesque. Yeah, and you know, and and everybody just had fun. It was a fun thing and it was a tradition it had become tradition for a while and it kind of went away and sometimes it had come back so yeah i would i definitely would like to see truth, that come back as well truth be told you know uh, every time you put a show together like that yeah, there's a dollar price to everything so that's probably why we haven't seen anything like that because there's a cost to every piece of, oh, of course. everything that you know that's being provided so nowadays it's probably not conceivable or else you'd have to jump everybody's price up twenty dollars just to pay for the insurance and you know pay for the performers and things of that nature. Why are you gonna bring it down? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> He's the realist. He's no, the he realist. In, yeah, he comes in with his, with his big mo dick, just pissing all over everything, man. What? Why? <laughs> I'm an accountant. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a really, uh, like a, a solid, you know, concrete group. No. It doesn't have to be the vaude villains because I know that they had issues trying to make their money back because they had some girls who traveled specifically to be, to be at the show. And they may or may not have made their money back. I mean, burlesque, those, those performers spend a lot of money yes, to look the way that they look and get their costumes just right and their music. And, and they spend a lot of time and money on doing that. So tip so, them when you see them. <laughs> yes, exactly. So they may yeah. not have made the money back, and I can get, I can understand that. But I mean, we do have other burlesque troops in Central Florida, um, so you know, so it, and they wouldn't necessarily have to travel that far. But you know, it's it's just another thing because I I just remember them being out after the show around the pool, and everybody was kind of talking to them and meeting them and taking pictures with them. So it wasn't just like you just saw them perform and then they left. Oh yeah, they were around the entire time. Yeah, they hung out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so screw you, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but yeah. Well, no. One of the other things, and I, I think this is something I, I thought about a little while ago. Um, I mentioned one time the free play arcade thing that they had, where they had the retro arcade games and stuff. Now, if I understand correctly, free play arcade isn't together anymore, and they're having some issues of their own. But there was uh, at one point, and I don't remember which spooky, but they had some of the console games. Now, if there was a dedicated room for like horror console games, you know, whether it's demos or whatever of new, uh, you know, horror console games. I mean, everybody loves, you know, Resident Evil, uh, The Evil Within, Red Dead Redemption. You know, they've got like all these, you know, Bioshock. If they had... Uh, some sort of setup, and I'm not sure, you know, maybe a sponsor from one of the bigger companies or something like that. But I mean, they've had it at Spooky where they have like demos you can play. I have this one picture of like Jason playing. I mean, he sit, he just standing there, full on in character, watching. And I wish I could remember the name of the game, but there was some slash, you know, saw hostile kind of game, and he's just standing there, just <laughs> staring at it. And the, the picture was so beautiful. But I mean, I would love to see just even a small room dedicated to like some of the horror consoling games because horror horror gaming is such a huge thing now. Um, yeah. There's a Friday the Thirteenth game. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but you can choose to be either Jason, and I think it's like a, a multi multiplayer game. I think it is, and you can choose to either be Jason or you can be the counselor. You know, so it's like there's all these great things coming out in horror gaming, and I think that's something that's really not looked at enough. And there's enough gamers at Spooky where I think that would be a great idea. Pinball is fantastic and everything, but just even three or four different consoles, you know, with these new games coming out, just playing demos, I, I think that could be a lot of fun. I do too. I definitely agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't even play, and I'd enjoy watching them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm not a gamer. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm more of a pinball girl, and I, you know, the guys in yeah. the pinball lounge, I'm sure, would be happy to bring something. But I would, cool. you know, if I, you're right, I mean, since gaming has become has gone so far beyond that, and even have have like a virtual reality station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man! You know, could you? That imagine, would be amazing. Yeah, could you imagine seeing a couple people going at it and they're like attacking zombies <laughs> or something? And you could see, you could have like a big screen behind them, and you see what they see, and they're being chased oh. by zombies. And that would be, I mean, they would be having fun, and then you'd be having fun because you're seeing what they're doing, and they're just freaking out. And how, you know, that would be worth the price of admission. I definitely think that. So. I remember who it was now because uh, I was on Periscope for a while, which unfortunately is a dying format. But uh, I saw, and I wish I could remember the game, but it was a zombie virtual reality game that uh, Todd McFarlane was trying out. Todd yeah. McFarlane of Spawn, and he does the Twisted Fairy Tales, and he does all these great toys. Todd yeah. McFarlane was Periscoping uh, virtual reality like some horror game, and it was wild to watch, you know, nine times out of ten, you don't want to sit there and, you know, watch somebody playing, you know, the Beyond or whatever, you know, I don't know, I don't know the hell names games anymore. But he was playing the zombie game and it was just like, oh shit, this is actually really damn cool. It's like you were yeah. immersed with him. Yeah. So, I mean, something like that, that's a great idea. I would love to see something like that. Yeah. You know. And, 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 and there's, there's something else I wanted to say as well. Like, I wish they would do some kind of a collective picture kind of a like a mini album before the costume contest or something and like oh. the end of the, uh, the weekend you know if there have been photographers who are working for spooky or the videographers and get with joe and you know do like some kind of a little interview and stuff like that and post it at the end of the weekend either post it online which is fine but also yeah. post it you know uh either at the pool party like saturday night or sunday before the costume contest that so way you have like yeah, everyone. that way you have not just celebrities, but also people who are attending conventions. It's like, hey, that's us, and hey, that was Thursday night, or hey, that was Friday afternoon. Yeah, you know, put it on Spooky TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I like that. Um, yeah. And, and I'm also going to third the karaoke because if, and then here's the thing I've never done karaoke. I've been too nervous. I'll sing all the live long day around my house and annoy the hell out of my kids, but I've never done karaoke. So. Oh, we are doing karaoke, I, girl. <laughs> Oh. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll have you know, I have a pretty decent, but my mother was a singer. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> we are doing karaoke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's on. Uh, it's you on. have to sing uh, uh, Don't Stop Believing. Okay. I said, no, I sing Don't Stop Believing. That's, That's the whole the thing. I do Don't Stop Believing every single time. And when I start belting it, people are like, whoa. And, and they don't realize I have like such a big voice. And it's like, well, yeah, I just I don't do karaoke. <laughs> Well, I no, I already I know Mo and I. No, Mo, we're, we got a choice. We can either do "Bring the Noise" by Anthrax and Public Enemy, because right. I I can do that one, or uh, "Close My Eyes Forever" by Ozzy and Lita. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. He's like, uh, uh, uh. all right. <laughs> but uh, either or, either or, because otherwise my go-to would probably be "Easy" by Faith No More. <laughs> oh my god. I do that. <laughs> or we can do some Hall and Oats. <laughs> I, you'd have to be Oats. I can't grow the mustache. I can't grow the mustache. <laughs> but PD, please, please. All right. PD, please bring the karaoke back. Just put on put a room in and start asking for songs to put in and let let's do some karaoke, man, because that's just way too much fun. The one more question I did want to ask, um, since we do have the 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 creator of Pillow Lando here, um, would it be possible to get something together in October or is that just a once a year thing in April? Or what do you think? No, and I'm not the creator of Pillow Lando, but Thank you for that. You're the voice I'm, of, I'm, all right, I'm, fine. I'm, the public face. I'm carrying the torch, yes. Um, yeah. You're, you're the PD. You're the PD of, of, of Pillow Lando. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I would like to have, you know, like a like a pillow fight thing again. Um, you know, like a pajama party jam or something like that. You know, but yeah. Yeah. It's, um, we didn't have that many people show up and it was kind of, you know, 
hit hit or miss, but we did have, there was a, a group of us, there was like five or six, and I took the injury, I took a fall, so hey. But, um, have your war wounds. Yes, I did, in serious pillow fighting is serious. But uh, <laughs> you know, every time we do it, we always have so much fun, and it's, and it's such a workout, and everybody's like, oh, I didn't realize I'd start, you know, you know, gasping for breath and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, it's a That's workout. That's a marathon a event, event, man. That's a yeah, marathon it's event. It's yeah. I think I'm going to do that next time. And I'm going to dominate pretty much because, you know. Oh, <laughs> challenge accepted. Just here's the thing. Don't show up late because Boris showed up late and he was <laughs> from all sides. And he was, he was I saw the picture of Boris. Boris. Boris was on the ground on in the, the fetal ground. position. <laughs> Just don't show up late. We post the because time, we post the location. Don't show up late. You show up late, and you show up, throw up to my pillow party, and guess what? You're going to get down. Oh, oh. <laughs> challenge accepted. See, oh, the, but these, these are. The difference between me and what? him is I'm not a little bitch. So, I mean, <laughs> so. Ooh! Yay! I love you, Boris. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, you're not. I love you. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Not, He's gonna be gunning for you now. No. See, but you see, that's the whole thing. You're a big guy. You can't creep up like Boris can. Boris can no, creep I'm up. No, a big on. guy. But you, yeah, yeah, but you I can, can also take a pillow to the face. So. <laughs> Fair enough. That's why he's gonna creep up on you with like a bag full of rocks or some shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> a sock full of nickels. <laughs> yeah, right. Like like mall rats, you know, come running up, swinging it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god, this is gonna happen. But see, this is why you guys need to make sure that you make your reservation for Spooky in October because this stuff is gonna be going on, and this is just a smidgen of the stuff that's gonna be going on. It's not just gonna be whoever the guests are doing a Q and A, it's not just going to be panels. It's not just going to be a oh, VIP party. This stuff, cross fingers, is going to be going on. Whether we, you know, I mean, like one of the things that we wanted to do at the Hyatt last time, and unfortunately we didn't get a chance to do it. We wanted to go ghost hunting at the Hyatt because there actually have been people that have died at the Hyatt. There was like someone in the parking lot and then there was something else. But yeah, we want to go ghost hunting at the Hyatt. So that's something we can do late at night. So we're going to go do stuff like that. So make sure you you get your, your, your room for Spooky and your ticket and start preparing your marathon, man, because pillows. <laughs> Pillow get your ass beat. <laughs> it's going down. Mo going and down. Boris, bring it. <laughs> Ooh, pillow cage match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pillow cage match. The thunder from down under. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this, man. Mo, Mo versus Boris. <laughs> it's, the fight of the, it's the fight of the century. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the Samoan versus the, versus the Russian, right? <laughs> 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 Gotta come up with weird wrestling names now and shit. <laughs> Kyle Dago versus, uh, who's the Russian guy from the... Uh, uh, <laughs> from Rocky, Rocky Three. Oh, uh, uh, Drago, Ivan Drago. What? <laughs> I know. He's like Mo's Moroccan. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I like Samoan because I like Samoan because Samoans are wrestlers. Moroccans aren't wrestlers. Morocco Mor Mo versus the Russian Boris. Who win? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Round one. Russia. Right. Russia. <laughs> For Mother Russia. <laughs> An international fight for the ages. Here. That's for Mother Russia. Oh, God, this is so going to happen. This I'll is be, so going to be a thing. I'll be a pillow wrestler. I don't care. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Raise money for will you, will you, Yeah. We could do that. We could. Will you dress sumo? Fuck yeah, I will. Oh. You put on booze in me. I'll do pretty much about anything. So All right. Like, I'm stocking up now. <laughs> All right, this is on. This is the thing that's going to happen. All right. All right. Well, th thank you guys for, for joining us tonight. It has just turned 11. We expected a half hour, but, you know, whatever. We get going. This we is what going. I have to say. Yep. Yeah. And, and oh, wait, he's he's been sleeping. He's, we've been sleeping on the job. Uh-oh. So, wait. See? He's clapping. <laughs> he's so excited. <laughs> uh, do, do, do we have our outro song? 
Okay, Dandridge, go away. And yes, his name is Dandridge. Dandridge. Dan Dandridge, yeah. Okay. Like Dorothy Dandridge? The show is over. Go the fuck to bed. <laughs> good, good night, everyone. <laughs>